This video explains how to handle missing values in our programming. So first we will create some example data, then we will insert missing values into these data using two different mechanisms. So first we will insert missing values using missing completely at random, and then also with missing at random mechanisms. And then we will apply listwise deletion and missing data imputation, and we will compare these two approaches for the handling of missing values. So without further ado, let's jump right into the R code. So as a very first step, we have to install and load two packages for this video. So in lines two and three, we are installing and loading the ggplot2 package, which is used for data visualization. And then we will also install the mice package in lines five and six and MICE is used for missing data imputation. I have installed these two packages already, so for that reason I'm just going to load them with lines 3 and 6 of the code. So after running these lines of code, the two packages are imported. Now in this video we will use some synthetic example data, and since this data set is depending on random processes, I also set a random seed for reproducibility, as you can see, in line eight of the code. So if you run this line of code, you will obtain exactly the same results as I do. Now our data set will contain 100,000 rows. And for that reason, we have to specify how large our data set should be. And we are doing that in line 10 of the code. So our sample size will be equal to 100,000. So after running this line of code, you can see at the top right that a new data object called nSample is appearing. Now in the next step, we are creating four auxiliary variables that we will use as predictors in our imputation models later on. And we can do that as you can see in lines 12 to 15 of the code. So as you can see here, we are creating four variables x1, x2, x3 and x4. And these variables are also correlated with each other. So after running these lines of code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that four new variables x1 to x4 are created. And then in the next step, we also create a target variable y that we will use for the missing data handling techniques. So after running line 16 of the code, this y variable is also appearing at the top right. And as you can see here in the data generation process, this variable also depends on our auxiliary data. In the next step, I create a data frame that I call df true, which contains our five different variables. So after running this line of code, a new data frame df true is appearing. And we can also print the first six rows of this data set by using the head function, as you can see in line 19 of the code. And then you can see at the bottom that we have created a data set containing five variables x1 to x4 and our target variable y. At this point, the data set does not contain any missing values. So now in the next step, we will insert some missing values and then we will apply different missing data handling techniques to these updated data sets. So in line 21 to 23 of the code, I'm inserting missing values in the y variable with a completely random mechanism. So here in this case, we first create a duplicate of our data set df true, which is dfmcar. And then in line 22 of the code, we specify that we want to sample randomly 25% of our cases, and we want to insert an A values to these cases in the variable y. So after running line 22 of the code, the data set is updated. And you can also see that by printing the first six rows of this data set to the bottom in the RStudio console. So as you can see now, the four variables x1 to x4 are still the same. However, the y variable contains an NA value at the first position. And if you would have a look at the entire data set, you will see that 25% of the values in this column are now set to NA or two missing values. In the next step, I also want to create a second data set which contains missing values because this first data set contains completely random missing values. And now in the next step, I want to create missing values that are following a certain systematic. So in this case, we want to create a 
a response mechanism which is missing at random. So in this case, we once again duplicate our true data set in line 25, and then we specify a certain systematic based on which the missings will be inserted in lines 26 and 27, and then we insert missing values according to this systematic in line 28. You don't have to understand the exact procedure. However, what you have to keep in mind is that now in this case, the missing values are related to our auxiliary data. And then we are in setting the NA values. And now in the next step, we can also print the first six rows of this data set. And as you can see now, we once again have NA values in the Y variable. And once again, 25% of this variable are now missing. At this point, we have inserted missing data into our example data set according to two different response mechanisms. Please note this video is also a little teaser for my online course on missing data imputation in R programming. So if you want to learn more about different response mechanisms and how to handle them using missing data imputation methods, please check out my online course, link in the description. So now at this point, we have specified our data sets that we want to use. And now in the next step, I want to apply listwise deletion to our data sets. And we can do that using the na.omit function, as you can see in lines 32 and 33 of the code. So as you can see here, we are first applying this function to our missing completely at random data set. And then we are also applying the na.omit function to the missing at random data set. And then we create two new data sets, which we call dfmcar list and dfmar list. So after running these two lines of code, our data sets are created. And this is basically it. Now we have applied list wise deletion, which means we are removing all rows from our data set where at least one missing value occurs. And now if we check the results, what we have created after applying this twice deletion, we can first see how the dimensions of our new data sets are. So how many rows do we have left? And after running 935 of the code, you can see that we still have the five columns in our data set. However, we have only 75,000 rows left, which means we have removed one quarter of our original data set. And the same is true for the missing at random mechanism. So after running line 36 of the code, you can see here we have also removed 25,000 cases from our original data set. And this, of course, might lead to problems when it comes to the statistical power of your analysis and when it comes to variance estimation and so on. So this is already a big drawback of listwise deletion. Now, in the next step, I also want to compare the mean values of our y variable in our three different data sets. So in line 38 of the code, I'm printing the mean value of our true data set. So this is our benchmark that we wouldn't have in practice. But since we are working with synthetic data, we can rely on this. So after running this line of code, you can see that the mean value of our true data set is basically zero, so minus 0 0.002. And now if we have a look at the mean value of the MCAR data set, you can see that this is some random variation. So in this case, the mean value is 0 0.001. So far, so good. So this means that if we have a response mechanism or a missing data mechanism that is completely at random, then our mean value will not be biased. However, if we now have a look at the MAR data set where we have systematic missing values, you can see after running line 40 of the code that the mean value in this data set is minus 0.155. So there's a relatively large difference compared to our true value, or in other words, the mean value in our listwise deletion data set is biased. We can also visualize that using the ggplot2 package, as you can see in lines 42 to 47 of the code. So here in this case, I'm creating three densities. The density of our y variable 
in the true data set, then in the missing completely at random data set, and in the missing at random data set. So after running these lines of code, you can see that a new graph is appearing at the bottom right. I can also enlarge this graph to show it a little bit better. And now you can see basically three densities. In red, you can see the missing at random distribution after listwise deletion. In green, you can see the missing completely at random distribution. And in blue, you can see the true values. And as you can see, the green and blue densities are basically overlapping. So there's no change in the distribution of our MCAR data set after listwise deletion. So there's no bias. However, if you have a look at the missing at random distribution, then you can see that this is significantly different because it's more on the left side. So we are underestimating the distribution and the mean value and so on of our true data set. So as you have seen, listwise deletion comes with certain problems if our data set is not missing completely at random. Even if it's missing completely at random, we are still losing some decent proportion of our sample size. And for that reason, I want to show you a more advanced technique which handles these problems better, which is missing data imputation. And to impute our data, we are using the mice package. And within the mice package, we have the mice function and the complete function, as you can see in line 49 of the code. So here in this case, you can see that we are applying the mice function to our MCAR data set. We also specify m to be equal to 1, because in this case, we want to use single imputation. Multiple imputation is usually preferable, but for the sake of simplicity in this video, I want to use single imputation. And then we store the output of this in a new data set that I call dfmcar mice. So after running line 49 of the code, you can see some output is returned at the bottom, which shows us that the y variable was imputed. And now we can do the same for our mar data set by running line 50 of the code, then a similar output is returned. And now we have two imputed data sets. We can also see the first difference compared to listwise deletion by checking the dimensions of our imputed data sets. So by running line 52 and 53 of the code, you can see that both our data sets still contain 100,000 cases. So we are not losing any sample size, which has many advantages when it comes to statistical power, variance estimation, and so on. In the next step, I also want to calculate the mean values of our completed data sets. So first, this is what we already know. I want to print our true value, and we already know that it's minus 0.002. And then I want to print the mean value of our imputed data set that follows a missing completely at random mechanism. So after running 956, you can see that once again, it's almost the same, only a slight variation of minus 0.001. So now the mean value is minus 0.003. And now comes the interesting part, because before in our previous example where we applied listwise deletion, the mean value was very biased. So it was minus 0.1 something. And now if we have a look at the mean value of the MAR data set after mice imputation, you can see that this mean value is also very close to the true value and much, much closer to the true value compared to the listwise deletion. So you can already see the mean was much less biased or even unbiased after applying missing data imputation. Now in the next step, I also want to visualize these data as we did in the previous example. However, this time we are showing the densities after mice imputation. So after running this, you can see that a new graph is appearing. And as you can see this time, all the three densities are basically overlapping. There are some slight variations here at the top, but these might also be due to randomness. So as you can see, the densities are unbiased after mice imputation, 
So we have more sample size and we have unbiased estimates after applying missing data imputation. And this shows big advantages compared to listwise deletion. So now we are at the end of this video and I hope I was able to explain some of the main differences between listwise deletion and missing data imputation and why missing data imputation is usually preferable. However, please note there are many open questions left, such as how do we detect if missingness is random or systematic? What is the best imputation method for different data types? How do imputation methods affect model bias and variance? How do we handle missing values in predictor variables? And should we use multiple imputation or is single imputation already sufficient? And if you want to learn about questions like this and about the topics we have talked about in this video, please make sure to check out my online course on missing data imputation in our programming link in the description. And then talk to you soon. See you. Bye-bye.